This podcast is brought to you by Kiwi Design, the leader in MetaQuest and VR accessories. And now you can deck out your device while supporting the podcast. The MetaQuest 2 is a great headset, but do you ever feel things could be a bit more comfortable? Well, we have the solution for you with lens protectors, controller grips, face covers, head straps, link cables, headset stands, and more, including my two personal favorites, the top version controller grips with added weight and an extended handle, and the Kiwi upgraded elite strap. Let's be real, we've all whacked our controller. Don't be the guy messaging Oculus support for your own mistake or waiting weeks for an out-of-stock controller. Visit the link in our show notes to prepare yourself today. After visiting the link in our show notes, make sure to use the promo code ROUGHTALKVR at checkout, all one word, to take full advantage of your savings. And make sure to click the link in our show notes so the podcast gets credit and you help support us. Remember, whatever you need, Kiwi has you covered. Hey, welcome to this episode of Rough Talk VR. Today we're joined not only with another VR podcaster, Mm -hmm. with one of the the co-hosts of Let's Talk Oculus with Samson. Today we also have, you know, the owner of a VR arcade in Providence, Rhode Island. Pretty close to our backyard. Yeah, right in New England with Toye. So this is going to be a fun one. You know, we're going to learn a little bit about, you know, the VR industry with arcades. This is the second time we've had somebody on who owns an arcade and it's interesting to hear the business side of things. As well, it's always nice to have a, a fellow VR podcaster on here. And beyond owning an arcade, they also have a, a cool little summer program that's about to kick off with enrollment in, in July. So it'll be good to hear about that. But before I talk your guys here off, do you mind to introduce <laughs> you, yourselves to our listeners? Uh, Toye, you know, tell our listeners a little bit about you and your arcade, The Bubbler. And then Samson, also tell us about yourself. And, you know, let's talk Oculus. Go ahead, Toye. Nah, yeah, sounds good. Um, yeah, so basically started the Bubble VR, Providence, Rhode Island. Uh, I got into VR kind of interestingly. Um, I was doing development in VR for the Navy. Uh, Rhode Island's pretty big on the Navy. Um, so was, you know, working at the Navy and we were doing um, development for our training simulations. And we discovered that oh we could do everything we're doing a lot cheaper with vr so <laughs> we were like all right let's go into vr um so from there i just like fell in love with vr i was like oh this is amazing like i need to like share everything we're doing here with like you know people in providence and um that's when i was like you know i i, I need to find a space where i can like kind of share different things that's going on in vr uh, new things that are happening, and that's kind of like how I started. A uh, quick summary of how I started on uh, Above the VR. And, uh, yeah, I'll just go right into LTO. So uh, I'm a co-host of Let's Talk Oculus with uh, Dan, and I actually met Toye because he was a guest uh, last November on our pod. And since then, I have become a regular at The Bubbler and help Toye do a few birthday parties and just volunteer there a lot. It's so much fun to introduce people to VR. That's awesome. So, you know, how often are you are you going, you know, as a regular there? Uh, I'd say I get there at least every other weekend, probably. All right. That's okay. a good endorsement. That's awesome. That's awesome. And I apologize if if I missed it, Toye, but uh, when did you open up the arcade? We uh, opened it early last year, so the beginning of last year. Awesome. Wow. So how's how's it been? You know, they always <laughs> say the first year of business is the hardest. The hardest. That's the time that, you know, half the businesses fail and everything. But VR is hot, you know, and, and I don't think that Providence is loaded with VR arcades. No. So no. what's this past year been like since opening the arcade? Yeah, definitely been a learning process. And, um, you know, it's my first, like, physical space business, so I was trying to learn a whole bunch of things on, like, you know, getting people in the door. Um, one of the things I did, under like, learn is, like, um, people know about VR, but people do not know about VR. Um, a lot of my customers were either first time playing VR, um, so there's a big learning curve. Um so like trying to understand that and like understanding like okay there's a lot of people adults who like are not into VR or 
just heard about it. Um, and like what we're really doing is like, you know, showing people firsthand like the technology and how it's, you know, used in recreational game play, but the other aspects of it. Um and really try to understand like, you know, who's who is the target market, you know? Um and kids get it. <laughs> Kids just get it right off the back of um, that middle school, high school age, even younger. But like, yeah, pretty much middle school, high school, they they just understand it. Um, they come in and look at the, uh, we use PC VR, and they're automatically asking me, oh, what's the graphic card? Like, they, they understand, like, um, the whole uh, tech now, like, tech um, components that go into VR. So it, it's great to, um you know, just learn that every single day um, what people are gravitating to towards the space who understand VR and the ones that don't understand VR. So it's, it's a great, um, uh, you know, place to be in because you just get in that data of everyone that comes in. And like, you know, yesterday, uh, me and Samson was trying to, uh, there was a, a party and we were trying to like kind of separate the demographics. We're like, okay, we had NBA 2K playing, like who gravitated to NBA 2K and who gravitated towards the VR and at what time in the beginning it kind of switched, you know, um, the kids were playing VR at first and then it kind of switched to like um, the male adults. So it was just interesting trying to like, you know, just understand that in real time. And like the games that they were playing, the kids were playing Arizona Sunshine together going through Horde mode. Um, Toya was trying to incentivize them to reach a certain level to get a discount on a shirt. So they got pretty into that. <laughs> um, and then later on, the adults, they understood boxing. And so they played Creed and they, were, they, they get real competitive with one another. I see so many people come in on dates or with a friend and they're like, I just want to beat the crap out of this person. <laughs> and you're like, whoa, let's play some Creed. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm, I'm curious because the VR arcade market is it to me it's it's a new actual market even though there has been varieties of some form of VRs and shopping centers here and there but the actual brick and mortar VR arcades what's the retention been like when you can get somebody to come in and try it are you seeing a higher retention than maybe you would have thought or do you think it's he's got some regulars. Yeah, see, that's that's what I'm I'm real curious. Such about. as Samson himself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's um, and you could speak on this too, Samson. Um, yeah, it's um, uh, kind of off and on. Um, I think it's things that are like relative to like a traditional arcade. Um, kind of like Samson said, like you know, a high score. Um, uh, people want to come back and beat it. Um, I think one of the things that is different is like. Um, in the traditional arcade, usually you're kind of like by yourself and isolated with the game. But with, with VR, with multiple, um, you know, VR headsets, you could um, tackle a specific high score, for example, together. So um, I think that's like the real um, core thing, doing something with a friend and trying to achieve this goal. Um, and and I, I see retention in, in that, you know. Um, trying to you know accomplish something with, with a friend, where traditionally it's more like you know head on and you're trying to win something by yourself. He's also got some uh, delicious sodas uh, that he offers, and that's part of where the bubbler gets its name. And um, they, I, I do recommend them. <laughs> All right, so now are these like um homemade sodas or? Uh, kind of like a, a mixture. So the the idea came from uh, in the Midwest, there's a bunch of soda shops like Soda Licious, um, is, and the idea kind of came from from that where it's a base soda, and then we kind of do our spin on it, and we add different flavored syrups like green apple, watermelon, and then we also add fruit purees, so like basically frozen um fruits. Uh, we kind of like add that in the mixture. We kind of come up with different um, combinations of that. Uh, the Blue Magic is by far one of the favorites. Uh, and it's funny because I'm coming up with all the names for the, for the drinks. Uh, they're all based on like something uh, or a movie or a show or something. And, Some um, good puns. Yeah. 
No, nope, I can respect that. That's awesome. Clever marketing too, because you'll always remember it. And and how big of a play space is this arcade? Yeah, I was curious that as well. Yeah, it's not that big. Um, it's not big for like uh, you know full role, like you know moving around, running around VR, um, like like the arena ones. Not, not that big, but um, I'm not sure on the square footage, but. Right now we have three stations, uh, you know, running comfortably, um, and looking to get another one. Um, but yeah, the, the space is, you know. I'd say they're about five by five. You have five feet by five feet at each station, roughly. So enough play area to actually mm-hmm. be able to. Okay. Especially if you're doing multiplayer and you each have a, your own PlayStation, you know. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. There are times I've gotten nervous watching people play Creed, and I'm like, oh my god, he's so close to that other person. Oh god. (laughs) That's awesome. And uh, so I know you were kind of referencing, you know, like Arizona Sunshine or anything and and stuff like that, but is there one app that is undeniably the most popular game in the arcade? Or is it like, you know, a good rotation of, ooh, it could be any one of these? I notice a lot of people come in and they don't really have a sense of any VR games. So they're like, I want to play. And you're like, what are your interests? like?" And so we usually try to start them off with something with not a lot of, moves, of smooth movement or anything. Pistol Whip, Arizona Sunshine, Beat Saber. Most people have heard of Beat Saber. Um, and I'm a big Synth Riders fan, so I, I try to push that one too. That makes sense. Rhythm games are good because it's kind of stationary. Motion sickness isn't really going to be a big issue. It's fun. It's easy to pick up. No, you know, I love, I love my rhythm games. Mm-hmm. You love both synth riders and Beat Saber. Yeah, I'm just better at Beat Saber than I see scores that get posted. I'm not posting my synth rider scores. <laughs> and uh, for Toye, is this is this the first business that you've owned, or do you have previous you know experience owning businesses? Yeah, I do have another business. Uh, it's called Muse Interactive. Where we created this smart mirror, uh, the Muse Mirror. But uh, this is my first retail space. So the other business is an online business. Um, but this is my first uh, retail space. And um, it's interesting how that happened. I was going to my friend, she owned a dance studio. And I was in there. I was like, God, oh, like, this is amazing. How do you do it? She, I just... Uh, called the landlord and gave him a deposit and he gave me the keys. I was like, really? So then leaving her place, I was driving around and I saw where the bubbler is now and it said for rent. And I literally just called and I just got the space. I didn't even know what I was going to do with it, really. I just got the space and, and kind of just figured it out. <laughs> it's a leap of faith. So how did uh, how did VR enter your life? You know, because well, well, the Navy, correct? Was that yeah. your first intro into VR, or, or was it earlier because you were maybe had computer background? Yeah, no, it was the Navy. Uh, I did not. I haven't even tried VR before. Um, I was working in it and developing. Um, in it. That, that was my first like taste of VR. Um, this was. Around, let me see, 18? Yeah, 2018, I would say. All right, I got to know how, Yeah. So without without being, if you're not allowed to say, I respect that too, but how tight is the the Navy technology for VR? (laughs) Even compared to today, or was it pretty like rustic in 2018? Um, Probably can't say too much, but I would say... Um, it was pretty good. Okay. So, so graphically they were doing well. So going back to what I asked before, you know, it's like, how did you, how did you settle on VR as the business? You know, you said that you, you found the, the space before you even knew what you were going to do, do there. You know, what made you go, all right, retail VR with a, with a VR arcade. I'll pick one of the hardest markets that no one's really <laughs> doing that there's no real... If someone said to write a business plan for a VR arcade, it's kind of like an up in the air because there's not a real foundation for it. I see several people do different things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there's a couple of things with that. Um, one, at the time, like I was just... Um, I was just amazed by VR and AR and, like, 
both VR and AR, and I was like developing in it um, at the time, like heavily creating different, um, even a bunch of augmented reality. Um, I didn't release anything. Uh, I was just like creating things and posting them online, and just to see people's reactions. You know, it was just like, it's going crazy. Um, and like, I just love the space. It was just an amazing space where you could just create. There was no limitations in VR and AR. There's no limitations. You create whatever's on your mind. Um, so I just, you know, love the space. But also, I just like uh, creating things um, that people haven't really seen before. You know, uh, like the, the Muse Mirror. That's kind of how that that came about. Um, you know, I wanted to, you know, enter a space like, okay, this is a product that everyone uses every day, a mirror. How can I, you know, make it um, useful and you know, futuristic? And that's, I was like, all right, I was just fell in love with that. And like, you know, with, with the VR arcade, I was like, okay, I see traditional arcades, but how could we make it in sort of like a lounge, um, you know, like a bar type that people could just come in and just like you, you know, walking into a regular, um, you know, let's say bar or cafe, and then experience uh, VR firsthand, and that was like, you know, uh, the challenge. I was like, all right, I don't see that anywhere. Let's let's do it. It's it's pretty cool. I'll see kids. They'll come from the basketball court up the road, and they'll walk in. And I was like, hey, give me some water. Give me some water. And they come in, and they're not really looking to spend too much money because their children and he'll give them all water and one or two of them might get in into VR. And I think this is how Toye came up with the $5 for 15 minutes. He had previously done what was it 30 or an hour. And so some kids will just, they'll scrounge together their $5. One kid sold, sold cookies and he, he was like, came in with his $5 and he'd be like, let me get for 15 minutes. Let me get in there. It's, it's fun. That's awesome. No, that's that's cool. I I remember being a kid in those days and scrounging up some some couch coins and being like, "All right, I got enough for for this." And I, I grew up in arcades were only a quarter. They yeah. never cost. There was no fifty cent. I think the first laser disc space it was some dungeon game was like fifty cents at the mm-hmm. time. And that's awesome. So at least I didn't have to scrounge up like a buck. <laughs> 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 no, I, I I commend you for. And I think you said it, you like, you wanted the challenge and I, I can't think of an industry that, but I, I, re, I want to go backwards a little to the development side of things. Since you know how to develop, you've done some stuff, you've also done some stuff we can't talk about, but do you, do you ever foresee yourself developing a game? Yes. Um, and I think this being at the bubbler is a great place so I can understand what that is. Um, and so far right now, what I'm looking at um, just in the space is competitive and fitness. Those are like the two things I'm, I'm looking at in VR uh, that you know people want. Um, something competitive, um, and then also fitness. A lot of people that come in, they come in and they're like, wait, I just worked out today. I don't need to go to the gym later. Oh, so they're wearing like, you know, fancy clothes and they're like, damn, like, all right, next time I'm coming to school. And, and they, you know, sometimes the people, when they come in on a date, they're wearing like high heels. I'm like, oh my God, no, <laughs> you don't know what you're about to do. <laughs> you should have like VR shoes. Like you go to a bowling alley, they have bowling shoes, you know. VR shoes. Yeah, rental shoes, you know. <laughs> hey, ma'am, you're not wearing the proper foot attire. I highly recommend these. Uh, you can bowl in high heels. Nobody will tell you that. Not that you can't. I just don't advise well, it. The bowling alley will. They will? Yeah, of course. Okay. You're not allowed to bowl without proper shoes. Yeah, really? You need those Correct. clown shoes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They got to be able to slide. I've always just put on bowling shoes. Yep. Never even try never try bowling in sneakers and see, sneaker, how, yeah. see how many. See, that's a good that's bowl. a good little side <laughs> side little hustle. VR lounge VR shoes. shoes. <laughs> no, I like the idea that there's and it was mentioned like that. You know, you can come in, walk down the street, see it come in. I'm mm-hmm. assuming there's a little lounge area. If you can get the sodas there, which I'm wicked intrigued about. Would love to try those. Um, do you do like catered events there and stuff? Like if someone wanted to rent out the space and be like, hey, I want to have a, 
a business party or I want to have my kids party there. Is that available as well? Yep. Yeah. We just had one yesterday, um, the week before. Yeah. People able to run out the space, bring their own food, um, you know, all of that. That's awesome. And what have kind of been some unexpected challenges in opening an arcade? You know, you obviously every business you go in with an uh, perception of, of what one thing is going to be. And then the reality of what's actually difficult and what came oh, easy, is, easy is very, yeah. very different. So what was kind of some of the things that caught you off guard of, Oh man, I, I wasn't expecting that. Uh, a bunch of things. Uh, <laughs> one, of, one of the things was uh, I needed an amusement license because I had more than two machines. I need an amusement license, and it's a reoccurring license that's like four hundred dollars in Rhode Island. I was like, "Damn!" And, you know, I, I've, I've got a lot of Rhode Island jokes, but I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to offend anybody in Rhode Island. But this is not surprising me at all. No, hey, even I was actually Mass- shocked it was only four hundred. In only- Massachusetts, our LLC cost alone is five hundred a year to register and five hundred a year to renew. Mm-hmm. Ruthless regulations. Yep. Yeah. an amusement license and that was just the amusement license like there's other licenses um you know that hit me you know throughout it um but i would say like you know that that kind of process i was i didn't know anything about um you know licensing uh with, you know the br part but also like the, the beverage part um even uh you know byob because we do byob um you know, even having to having to operate that the right way. Um, I'm not allowed to advertise it. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. Yep. So it's a word of mouth. Yes. <laughs> that's so crazy. <laughs> that's, that's, I just love that's though awesome. how like you know people people are willing to take the risk and and be entrepreneurs and the amount of and I know we did it when Tracy I had her open that brick and mortar store. It's like the hands start coming to the door and. It's all a little, we want a little big piece of your pie mm-hmm. before you even make your pie. Mm-hmm. Makes mm-hmm. it just that much harder. Uh, and especially because yeah. like you said, it's a lot of it you don't know about until, because it's your first time doing it. And so then the door industry, knocks, yeah. yeah. And you go, oh, shit, now I, well, I guess now I know. Um, <laughs> but kind of related to that, what's kind of the reception of the local community been? Like, have, are people interested, welcoming to VR? Is the, the, the city excited to see it is it neutral you know what's the what's the local reception to the industry been like uh yeah it's been good like uh the kids like it the parents like that their kids have a you know a great place to stay um and, and be safe you know it's really you know a safe place that kids can come and i get to like speak with the kids on like a specific level like they'll come sit at the bar talk about you know, how they got to a fight at school or like, you know, they'll um, you know, teach yeah. us a new jargon. Yeah. <laughs> just a new slang. <laughs> Stay up to date. Yeah. If you don't know it, your age kind of oozes out, especially you use old school terms. I'm 26 and I've, I've lost the battle already. <laughs> it's, you can't keep up. Yeah. Uh, I feel just like, to, so, sorry, keep going. Sorry, Simpson. Uh, just to talk more on that. There was one mother who, it was like a monthly pass she she bought for her son, and his her son will come every day after school and play for an hour or something, and that was that was something special. I like that. Yeah, oh, that that's really cool. And uh, is this something that you know you see yourself staying at this location? It's sustainable. Do you plan on growing it? You know, switching locations, or is it kind of uh, taking you know every couple months by every couple months right now? Um, yeah, right now taking, you know, month by month, um, introducing new things. Um, but yeah, that is the goal to, to grow, um, to like, you know, exponentially. Um, but first, um, looking to find that like product market fit where, um, you know, that's, it might be one specific thing or it might be a chain of things, um, you know, all together wrapped up where we have like a package and we, you know, competitive fitness um, programs um, that are together to be packaged where we see like, okay, this is something that this specific community needs. 
Um, and then being able to duplicate that. Franchise them. Yeah. Oh, that's the, yeah, that's the holy grail of operating any business. You can get franchise or distribution. And mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm loving, it seems like you could take it really any direction you want. If you want an after school program, it seems like you could weigh heavy on that. And, you know, between the hours of like one thirty to four, you know, your kids can have a safe place to be. And well, kind of on that, you know, one of the reasons we have you on it, that was my lead in. Yeah. Well, you know, we had referenced <laughs> it in the intro as well. Correct. Um, you know, you guys are, are about to run a, an after school program this summer that enrollments in July. Summer program, correct? Yep. Yes. I said after school, right? Yeah. It's technically after school, right? School's yeah, out. So it's after, no, but yeah, summer program. <laughs> uh, so do you want to tell us a little bit about what's going on with that? Um, Take it away, Toya. I could start and then probably Samson can build on that. Yeah. So um wanted to start some, you know, summer programs for school. Uh, high schoolers right now. Um, we have a friend, uh, me, Sam says, and a friend of mine, Victor, who are working on this. Um, and basically, this first session is called VR 101. Um, you know what? I, I think you might be able to explain this better, Samson. Yeah, yeah. Basically, we want to teach these kids all about VR. A quick, short history teach them about careers in VR and then have them develop or come up with an idea of their own that they think will work in the VR or AR space. I was a business major in college and one of my first intro classes was come up with a business plan and help a company increase its growth 10% or whatever and and just come up with anything. And I want to sort of extrapolate that to this. So teach the kids about business, a few careers that exist, and then see if they can come up with anything. Kids are so creative and I'm just really curious what, what they're going to come up with. So teach them about careers in developing medical careers, creating an arcade content creation. Um, yeah, just all of them, <laughs> just all of them, and then see what they come up with, and then the it'll end with a short business presentation that they'll present, and ideally get them all into VR in, in a fun way as well. I mean, leading up to this, I had read the, I guess the the pamphlet online of what was being offered if if you sign up, and it was that was kind of really the reason I was like, I, I'd love to do this interview. Cause it seems like such a good thing to put out there. I don't see anything before being put out there like this for, for, you know, that even if it starts at high school, that's a great, I don't think people, kids know that there's opportunities that exist for things they might enjoy or might not even know that they have a passion for. Well, unfortunately sometimes video games still have kind of, kind of that negative, like, Oh, it's just video gaming, but there's a whole Can't industry do it for in a it. Living. You know, no, there's, there's, and there's it people needs that to be work communications, on. people that work marketing, people that work the legal side, people that work the, the graphics design. So even beyond just making the game, there's an entire industry of careers. And it's, I wish that when I was a kid that I knew that there's more to the VR industry, even than just being the, the one, you know, coding, there's an entire industry that you can get involved in. And that might be owning a VR arcade or, you know, any of the possibilities. So it's, I think that that's going to be something that's really cool for, for kids to hear. I'm curious, is there a way we can know the outcome of what some of these, these students come up? That is totally one of our, the things that we want to focus on because we know these kids probably don't have any experience potentially with VR and so following them, checking in in four years in college, post-college, how, what percentage of these kids ended up in gaming or ended up in VR or ended up in AR and and using that as our data? Yeah. No, I'm, I'm thinking just by numbers. Some Somebody, and what's crazy is, is like the next biggest thing in development could be coming in this door for a, a program that never even knew that how often have we talked with developers and we go, how did you, you know, discover VR and one little random mm-hmm. experience Encounter. just now they yeah. fell in love with it and started coding and boom, then we got a, a hit game we love. So 
<laughs> Who knows the butterfly effect being caused potentially by something like this? Just plant seeds. And how, how long is this um, program running for? Like, when does it actually start, and then when will it theoretically be over? So we're going to have two sessions. They're all going to be one week long. Um, so the first day they'll start, and then Monday, and then on Friday they'll present. Um, we have two weeks, um, one in July that starts, and then we're going to do another one um, in August. Awesome. And what's registration look like? Like, is the registration open now, or is it open... You know, next week, what's the the registration process look like? Uh, right now, it's closed for a specific um, set of uh, students that are in Providence um, that, that go to a specific school. So it's closed right now to, to those uh, students. But um, basically, um, in the future, when we do the programs, uh, we'll open it up to like you know general kids. Victor works with a nonprofit, and he's sort of set us up with the kids from this nonprofit. Well, it makes sense too to start with the community that you're in. There's something very special about giving back to your community. Let me tell you, it kind of sucks if you're busing people in from another exactly, state to exactly. take away what should be a, a you know, a homegrown before it's anything else. So kind of more what I was getting at, you know, are, is the registration for those kids in the high school, are they is it full for that first session? Is there still spots available? You know, for the kids that go to the eligible high schools, are they able to sign up right now? Yep, yep, they're, they're able to um, sign up right now. I'm not too sure on the um, count right now. Yeah, it's on uh, Victor's end. Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, if I heard VR gaming as one of those after school or, you know, summer programs, I think I would have been all up on that as a kid. Like I said, there wasn't enough of those type of opportunities when I was in high school. How's the reception been? Because I'm assuming you're working closely with these schools or somebody is to to allow this to happen or to help promote it to happen. But how's the reception been on the educational side of it? Um, I would say I haven't dived too much, you know, within the school system yet. Uh, I'm looking to. That's definitely one of the goals, um, you know, going into, you know, the fall. Um but I've been speaking with um, different schools. I would say uh, public schools are a lot more difficult, but charter schools are a lot flex more flexible and easier to speak with. Um, there's a charter school uh, around the corner, San Miguel, and I have went there, um, spoke with the kids, spoke with the teachers uh, on various things. Um, with we are still trying to figure out how we will be able to work together but there's there's something there. But I'll say charter schools are um, amazing because they go by their own rules. And I'll say that again, that's like the first um, you know type of school that I would you know, try to go after. Um, but right now, um, it's just c- communication. Um, nothing I'll say uh, per se has been like set in stone. It's more like um, you know, uh, us educating them on you know. Uh, the potential of VR, and I think when we do this summer class and they see that, um, uh, you know, they'll be able to understand, like, okay, yeah, this is something we should like, pay attention to. I've, I've been pushing it. I have a teaching background. I used to teach elementary school through high school, and I just see so much potential in after-school programs, potentially before-school programs, summer programs, and so this is almost our trial run the summer camp, see what works, see what doesn't, and then extrapolate that into more programs, ideally. And then we're able to sell our, we have evidence, we have, hey, we did this, look what we've done, we could do this with you. That's awesome. I, I think it's a great idea. I'm loving, a, even if it's just a small portion of the, the program, but just the fact that there's an after-school program that's going to be safe, while not only fun, but educational. Mm-hmm. And you, you get to learn something. I mean, but have fun doing it. Those combinations don't usually go together. Well, again, I can't stress it enough. That high school is a time where, you know, you're expected to find what you want to do next in life, but you don't know everything that's available Dude, as I a kid. I don't know what I want to do next in life. <laughs> right? <laughs> and it's, uh, you know, it's important for youth to hear the different possibilities that exist that their brain might not even think is a possibility. And one of those, like I said before, the gaming and VR industry. So, 
you don't know the ripple effect that this could have with somebody no, long term. Truth be told, I, I was always under the impression that to be a programmer, you had to live out in Silicon Valley mm -hmm. and you had to be tied in. with. I didn't know that, and especially in VR, it's like you have people doing these, this in small studios, small mm -hmm. environments, and it's just something that isn't spoken of enough. And when yeah. we talk to developers, they always say the same thing. Do it. Just you, know, get you don't have to wait. You can just start learning to program and so put I'd, your ideas down. I'd love to hear, you know, Samson's in our Discord, so he'll probably keep us updated how the first session goes. But I'm going to, yeah, because I want to have some, I got some questions when this thing actually rolls out at the end of it. I was going to say after the August session, I'd love to hear how, <laughs> how things went in total. You know, you, it's your first time, so... You know, I'm sure that second session you're going to have ironed in a little bit. You're going to be like, all right, you're going to finish yep, those yep. first two weeks and go, all right, now for this next one. And so when it's all wrapped up, I'd love to hear. Do you think you we know, could, I mean, I don't know how many presentations there are going to be. Is it going to be like 50, 100? It's like, who knows? But if I'd love to see, and I don't want to say a best of, because that's not really cool. Yeah. But I'd love to have both of them on and actually talk about what some of the ideas were. Yeah. I don't know if that's and again, possible. And again, how it actually how it all went because uh, somebody's going to come up with such a bomb idea or someone's going to hear it and they're going to be all it. over it and i'm sorry if you mentioned this I'm, I'm jumping way around you might have mentioned this way at the start but what headsets do you use in the arcade is it quest 2s i use valve indexes nice nice i'm sure that helps with the uh the first time vr introduction you know you go <laughs> in you don't have to worry about you know, I love the quest too. I always do, but sometimes you really got to make sure somebody's got it on good and just having a nice high quality high quality headset definitely helps. So that's good to hear. It's mm -hmm. not just Quest 2s or anything like that. We'll definitely got some Quest 2s for the camp though, too. Yep, yeah. <laughs> and with selling soda, do you sell munchies too? You sell some foods? Um snacks, chips. That makes sense though. That's really all you need. I I've always thought like I don't want to be eating a pizza. I don't think you want to serve like spicy Barbecue mm -hmm. wings with no. headsets. You <laughs> exactly, know? exactly. Give me those controllers. <laughs> yeah. Let me touch this lens with my. That's the thing with those index controllers. So I'm I've been a Quest Two user. I've been a Quest One user, and those index controllers with the grip, it, I never figure that one out to where I feel very comfortable with it. And the kids who have smaller hands don't go all the way down to the grip, so they sometimes have a hard time uh, yes. picking up guns in America. Uh, not American Sunshine, Arizona Sunshine. American <laughs> Sunshine. <laughs> uh, no, that makes sense. I love the, so the Quest 2 controller is the default size. It's nice. And then I have the Kiwi attachment size. You say nice. I say small. Yeah. But I can see how if you're a kid, that default <laughs> Dude, Quest 2 size is. Put, put one of those controllers in a football player's hands. So <laughs> and it disappear. Yeah. So I could totally see how if you're, you know. 11 12 you go to put that on you go oh man i can't use the full the full thing so that makes sense and then i'm sorry. Curious, i'm sorry I, I was you hosting any tournaments at the arcade yeah we actually do um we do smash every wednesday uh smash brothers every wednesday um last day was most we had 32 people sign up um and uh, we're going to bring it back but last year we did um 11 vr uh the table tennis and it was like cash prizes um so yeah that was that was pretty fun we'll probably bring that one back but i want to try to figure out you know what other competitive games and that's kind of like you know i've um, been speaking with samson about like you know trying to figure that out what's the next game for um competitive uh, tournaments in vr well hopefully we see because people use the Smash Brothers comparison for Quantar. Yeah, hopefully we see Quantar <laughs> blow up with the social features and the the esports features, and I think in a couple months that could be a, a prime candidate to include as well with cross play of PC VR and Quest. You know, you could host something something pretty fun locally. Honestly, I don't know if I'd promote it so much because there's going to be so many good players coming in there. We got spanked <laughs> for the first time yeah last night. We've never gotten spanked really? in that game before. I've lost, but I've never been bullied. Well, that was a, so we had one previous loss as a team, but it was your mm. first time ever playing. You didn't know how to play yet. And then we won 14 in a row. Mm. Unstoppable. <laughs> and then we got spanked last night. It was I mean, bad. it was bad. We got murked, molly whomped, thrown out, got the two pieces in the biscuit. You name it, it came our way. It was bad. Yep. That so, game's mad competitive. People are starting to figure out that meta, huh? 
Oh my goodness! No, it was a little suspicious. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not gonna be a sore loser. I'm not making accusations. I'll just say, but <laughs> it was a little suspicious. My That's character a, that I play with was the same can't. as theirs, and it can't do half the stuff that they were doing. It was a little <laughs> suspicious, but I was like, man, is this how it feels when we womp on people? You know, it's not as fun. Uh, but that's awesome. And for you, you two, what's some of your favorite VR games in your free time? You know, not in the arcade, but just in general. Samson, I know you, your co-host of Let's Talk Oculus. Same He's boat as us. Yeah, same <laughs> yeah. boat as us. You know, two, so many games, especially this past year. You know, there's there's a backlog to say the it's least. Too but, many games. Yeah, what's some of both of your favorite games? I know it's a hard question. Sometimes people ask us these questions. And then it's a moment answer to me, though. Yeah, you can't really always think of all of the top games, and it ends up being, yeah, what have you been playing in the moment? But I mean, yes, and I have my moment games, but I've had games that I go to for years now, which would be Walkabout and Synth Riders. I use Synth Riders at least weekly to work out, and Walkabout is just the best way to keep in touch with people. During pandemic, I played with f- friends from childhood and my brother, and now it's more turned into playing with my VR community. But as far as other games that are more in the now, I'd say Breachers That's and Quantar. That's, that's what's been going on lately. <laughs> yeah, Quantar is so much freaking fun. I know we've been plugging it hard in, in the Discord, but damn, from a competitive standpoint, it is pretty fun. And what about yourself, Toya? Um, I would say, um, all time of an assassin. That's my like all time favorite uh, game. The archery. I could, um, you know, so that I like just games I could play with other people. Um, that's like a game I could just pick up with my friends and we can just try to go the distance. Um, I do like um, Cookout with Sandwich Tail. That's one of my all time favorites too. Um, newer games. I like Ultimix. Um. Uh, I love Ultimix, yeah. Uh, competitive free game. It's hard to go wrong with that. <laughs> yeah, definitely like Ultimix. The Rocket, the Rocket League of VR. Um, and, oh, Breachers. Um, I need to get more into it. Uh, I need to play more, but the gameplay is insane. I, I, I Right now, I suck. But <laughs> it, it's definitely a game that's just, I could see uh, the potential in it. Just to plug for Elvin, what's that? Uh, you have a competition, right? If somebody gets past the highest level that anybody's gotten on Elvin, you get a free hour of VR. Is yeah. That it? yeah, yeah, you get a free hour if you get to wave twenty or beyond. Um, someone last year got to wave twenty last summer. No one has uh, got there. I think the closest was probably fifteen or sixteen um, since then. But uh, yeah. Uh, no group of people have <laughs> come into the bubble and, and uh, you know, got past 20. That we, sounds like a challenge if anyone's in Providence, Rhode Island, and need to stop in there if you think you're good at that game. And that's one that we played when we first got our headset. We played that Addictively. game so much. It's like, it, I love tower defense games, so it felt like VR archery tower defense, you know, it was... Dude, we were hooked on that so bad. And I've heard other people say, like, jokingly, who own arcades and stuff, that, like, they could fund their whole arcade off of Arizona Sunshine, Beat Saber, and uh, Elven Assassin. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So it's so much fun. So that's good to hear that <laughs> that there's a little, of you know, challenge there and there, there's some popularity with it. I think that that's a game that doesn't get the love it deserves either. Like, in, like no, the, but it's still being community. played to this day. Yeah, it's, it's like the quiet, the quiet one that doesn't go away and doesn't need to go mm-hmm. away. It's fun single player, really fun multiplayer, yeah. challenging. You know, start slow and then holy shit, it gets hard. So, <laughs> so that's awesome. When those dragons start coming, oof! I was yeah, there. that's a game changer. Mm-hmm. Start blowing the the fire at you. Oh my goodness! <laughs> I'm not the... to jump from platform to platform. Yeah, you know, yeah. we haven't hopped in that one in a bit. I think I'm a little overdue for it. Yeah. Um, but no, you know, huge thanks to you both for. For coming on today talking a little bit about the program again like we said before we'd love to hear how the, the results i want to hear the result i want yeah. to hear just a handful of the yeah i'm curious about the ideas that are kicked around here yeah i want some updates after session one but i really want to hear you know the conclusion of of them both you know how that all went and then uh before we let you go do you want to plug a little bit how people can find the bubbler <laughs> both in person on social media and then also for yourself samson you want to plug where people can find Let's Talk Oculus? 
Yeah, sure. Um, on social media, Twitch, Instagram, TikTok, uh, Bubbler VR, B U B B L E R V R. Um, and our website is um, the Bubbler VR dot com, and that's where we have you know all of our information there. Um, yeah, pretty much you know Instagram. If you have an Instagram, uh, you know just DM. Uh, we also have a Discord as well, but yeah, everything's Bubbler VR. And let's say you live in the Providence area. What's the address in case we? Yep. 568 Charles Street, Providence, Rhode Island. The capital is right there, right in the middle. Uh, yeah. And if you buy a drink there and post it on a social media, there's a pretty significant discount there. You heard it here. Look at that. And Samson, where can people find uh, Let's Talk Oculus? Yeah, Let's Talk Oculus, uh, we're on YouTube, uh, release mostly weekly podcasts on all your favorite and unfavorite podcast platforms, and we have a nice community on Discord as well, and I can be found pretty much in every VR Discord. <laughs> yeah, I will attest, you're, you're a good contributor in ours, always bringing good conversation. And I gave props this morning when I'm like, you know, there's just some people that can maintain a presence and everything mm -hmm. where I, I struggle after, you know, I'll read a lot of times in other discords, but I'm not as, even in our own, I'm not as half as active as everyone else is, but. Well, and a lot of times there's really good discussion because not everybody has the same exact belief. Yeah. So there's never arguments. There's never like it gets heated, but it's not like just a circle discord's joke cool. of the, of the same thoughts. So it's, it's definitely good to, to have Samson around. And uh, before we let you got you boys go, is there anything else that you guys wanted to say or plug before we let you out of here? Uh, I don't think so. I will plug your, your discord though, because it is some, it is the place for top notch VR discourse. It, uh, I, that's a good place to get some news, some different views. And I love, I love that I found that discord. Awesome. No, the VR community is is the best. There's nothing. Uh, it's uh, honestly, as far as someone who's gamed his whole life, it's. I think VR. I mean, even though there is toxic moments in VR, they exist everywhere. But it is the most friendly community I've yeah. seen overall. Until Rust comes out, and then <laughs> <laughs> the ugly side's going to start to show. But hey, sometimes I'm a little mean and ghost to Tabor as well. But I'll also even say like the. Content I want to take a trip to Providence. Yeah. How was your um? Uh, before we, like, I'm sorry, I just get more questions. No worries. No worries. <laughs> Hours of operation: five days a week, six days a week. Are we doing seven days a week? We're doing Thursday through Sunday. There's a Friday five to ten, Saturday one to ten, and Sunday one to six. Awesome. That's perfect hours. So yeah, forever in the Providence area, we'll definitely go check it out. And to it's any not of too our, far away. No, and to any of our listeners, if Get you're in the Samson area, Samson up on the way. Yeah. <laughs> <Don't> <laughs> you. If you're in the Providence area, go check it out. Hell, you might even see Samson in there. So why I'm, not? I want to try to beat that level twenty. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> if it stayed up there for a year, you know, if I can leave my mark somewhere, if I see a burger that I'll give you I for spent free, an I'm hour. Just try it. I spent an hour and we are one chasing a leaderboard that I knew I was going to get beaten on just because I wanted to be first place for 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think I'm an easy sell on that. So <laughs> thanks to our listeners for listening today. You know, it was, this was a fun one. Again, I'm curious to, to hear how this whole program goes at mm -hmm. the conclusion. So we'll definitely, definitely get a, an update on that. And to everyone, thanks for listening today. Ciao, ciao.